Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the DNS service that's built into OS X Server. Now DNS stands for Domain Name System and it's what takes uh, numbers like your public IP address and turns them and, and attaches them to words uh, where we can put things like server.example.com and that will translate to the numerical address that we've got for uh, where that particular server is located and so DNS figures all those things out and handles all of that uh, name translation and so it's a very valuable part of uh, Mac OS server and it's one of those things that you want to get right so that everything functions properly uh, if you remember in our setup uh, video that we did where we set up server uh, we had come in here and when we had done the host name we had set the uh, had the server set up the DNS at the same time as we set up the host name, so that we had a server.example.com, for instance, uh, as the thing that we had set up for our host name, which is perfect because that's what we want. So let's just go back down here to DNS. What I want to show you today is how to set up the DNS service to get it to the way we want it. Uh, many of us want to have uh, something where we can put a, let's say, a www in front of example.com, but because our host name in our DNS says uh, server.example.com, we're having to put www.server.example.com, and that's just not what we want to do. So I'm going to show you how we can uh, configure this DNS service uh, manually to get where you want to be. Now, as we get started, I just want to run through a few things. You notice the service is on. That's what the green uh, on switch is. And you can see the status is green and that we need to set our DNS settings to uh, the public IP address of our server to use it. And so that's telling us everything there is OK. If we come down here, we can set permissions right within the DNS application here. And this is really nice because we can do this for the other services as well. If I just come in here and edit permissions, I can choose all networks or just private networks, right? If I just want it to be my private server or only some networks where I get to specify what those networks are. Just by uh, clicking the plus, I can put the information in. I'm going to go ahead and put this back to all, all networks here so that it stays the way it is. But just wanted to show you that you could do that. Now here we have forwarding servers. You notice it says I've got three. Let me just hit edit that. Uh, what server does is it uh, automatically puts down, uh, let's say, my router uh, uh, information on there. And then it also picked up uh, the uh, public DNS that I've got. Now, uh, most cases, the server is going to be fine looking to itself. Uh, so we don't necessarily need all of these extra things in there. We could actually get rid of these and just leave the public one. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. But you could, uh, you could actually come in here and change these things uh, and set them up the way you want. But I'm just going to go ahead and say cancel and just leave that alone for now. Now I can also perform lookups and choose who I do that for, uh, either only some clients or all clients. I can choose how I want to do that. Uh, if I say edit uh, lookup clients, I can come in here and say perform lookups for and say the server itself, clients on the local network, clients on the following networks, and I can check off very uh, specific particulars there. Or I can just change this to all clients and then this goes away because there's nothing I need to change. So it's up to you on how you want to do that. You can set that up either direction. So now down here, you notice it says host names, and I've got my host name right there, server, let's say, .example.com, pointing to my private IP address, and it's set up just the way server uh, did it when we first set up the server initially. So what I want to do is show you what it looks like to customize this. So if I just uh, hit this and say show all records, you'll notice that it's created a primary zone and a reverse zone. And what this means is that server itself, right, this primary zone points to a particular IP address, which is my local IP, 10.0.1.3. And in reverse, 10.0.1.3 also points to my server name. And so that's why you have this reverse zone, because it's kind of a double check. It checks forward and it checks reverse to make sure that it's working properly. Now, if I just uh, hit these little triangles here, you'll see what server set up for us. And I'm going to do it for both of these. You can see that it's set up an A record for my server name, and it set up a, a name server record or NS record for it as well. And then on the reverse zone, I've got a PTR record for my local IP address, and then I've got an NS record as well for that reverse uh, lookup. 
And so those are the records that it's set up automatically by itself. Now, for most of you, this may just be fine, and, and you don't want to add too many extra things. You've got all your information hosted on the outside, and everything's working fine for you. If that's the case where you've got your server, uh, you've got your websites and all that hosted outside, I would just recommend leaving this alone, and you'll probably be fine with everything that you want to do. Uh, but for those that might want to try uh, something different, maybe they want to host the web page on the server itself, and so you really need a primary zone uh, that lets you put www in front of it without the server uh, subdomain in there, uh, then you might want to do something different. So what I'm going to do here is I want to show you something, because if I came in here, let's say, and I wanted to create another A record, and let's just say I'm going to add another machine record, and I want to add that for www. Now the problem that we've got here is if I type in www, you see how it does put the www in there, but it puts it in front of the server. And I, I may not want that name on there because I just want it to be clean. I want it to be www.example.com. So I'm going to cancel this out. So what we're going to do is add uh, our own records. And I'm going to show you what these records mean. If you look on here, in fact, let me just uh, collapse these so that we've got these collapsed. If you look on here, I've got various records I can add. Uh, I can add a machine record, which is an A record, and that's uh, what I need to point to a particular machine. I can add an alias record, which is a C name record, and what that does is say, hey, if you put in www, for instance, uh, it's the same as if you're putting in server.example.com, so just point that direction, and so it's an alias record. I've got mail exchanger records. If I'm hosting mail, that's an MX record, and so I set that up for mail. And then I got a name server record, which is uh, is the name server that basically verifies everything. And so that would be um, in a situation where, let's say, you've got your website hosted on the outside. Uh, you may have your hosting company who owns the name server for that, so the website works. Uh, if you've got a front-facing server here, you might want to have name servers on your own server. So it all depends on what you're doing, but that's what those are. And then you've got your service records for the various services and things that are on the server. But you notice down here I've got a primary zone and a secondary zone. And so the primary zone is what we saw up here, and the secondary zone would be something that you would set up to, um, to uh, use the existing primary zone. So it would be like a backup to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new primary zone, and I'm just going to call it example.com or whatever my host name is. And so I've got the primary zone set up. I can choose how long the zone data is valid for, and I'm just going to leave it alone. I can allow zone transfers. I can set up secondary zones if I've got that. But I'm just going to create this, okay? So I've created this new primary zone. And you can see that's been created there, and that new primary zone uh, has no records in it. If I just uh, hit this uh, arrow here, there's no records. So let's go ahead and set up uh, a machine record that points to our host name, right? Because our host name is the server. So let's go ahead and hit that. So I'm going to hit a plus here. I'm going to add a machine record. And I'm going to put it in that new primary zone. And if I do the drop down, you can see I've got both of them there. And I'm just going to put in the word server. so that it will now equal what my host name is. And I come in here, I'm going to add my private IP address. Just like that. And I can put text in here to explain it if I want to, but I'm just going to go ahead and create that. And so now I've got an A record in here, right? The A record and NS record that is the same as what I had for this other one. If I just drop this one down, they're the same. So I've got the same records in both places. And so that's great. I've got that all set up and, and ready to go. And you'll notice down here, too, I've got that one, and I've got this right here as well. So we've got some redundancy going on with our records there. Now, what I could do now is I can set up other records under this one. Let's say I did want to do one for www. If I just hit this here, and I add, I can do it as a machine record, or I could do it as an alias record. Uh, and so let's go ahead and just do it as an alias record for a second. And if I just say the host name uh, source, There's www, you can see that right there. And the destination would be to my uh, server address. Just like that, because that's the machine it's going to go to. And if I hit create, now I've created a CNAME record under here. And you can see there's my CNAME record for this particular uh, address there, the www address. 
And so that's how I can go about adding all those in there. Now, once I've got it the way I want it, I don't need these redundant records. So I can come in here and actually delete uh, this particular zone that I've got right here. So let me go ahead and, and get everything set to do that. Okay, now to delete this, I'm going to delete this uh, area right here. I'm, I don't want this uh, zone, this primary zone. I just hit the minus here. It says, you sure you want to do that? Deleted zones can't be uh, restored. I'm going to go ahead and say delete. And you notice what it's done is it's pulled out uh, not only the zone, but the reverse uh, records as well. And it's left me with my newly configured uh, primary zone with the exact same records underneath so that everything's set the way that I need it to be and you can see I've got that there right and I've got my C name and I've got my PTR record and so that's looking uh, pretty good that's looking exactly uh, the way that I would want that and so that's how you would do that to configure uh, a primary zone that allows you to put those other things in there now what we need to do is if you want to access your server on the internet then we need to go to your domain provider and go ahead and fix the DNS so that it works. Now in my case I'm using a dynamic IP address which means that I had to use somebody who would keep that dynamic IP address up to date because a dynamic IP address means that the address will change every once in a while because it's being leased. And so I'm going to show you how to do that this uh, with the dynamic uh, DNS but you can do this the same way even if you've got a static IP address. So let me just go over to my website and show you how to set that up. Okay, so here we are over on Namecheap's website, and I use Namecheap uh, for my dynamic DNS. Uh, they have a free service you can use, or if you register your domain with them, uh, you get a few extra uh, services there. Um, but the free service works pretty well. And what it does is it just keeps your public IP address up to date. You run a program on your Mac, and it tells Namecheap that your IP address has changed, and that way you never stay out of contact with your server. It just does that updating for you. And so it works out really nice. So what I'm going to do is add uh, records down here that match what we have on our server. So I'm just going to hit this to add a new record. And you can see it's a dynamic DNS record. And I'm going to put one in for server. And I just need to put server in there. And then our public IP address. I'm just going to paste that in there. And then once everything looks good, I'm just going to hit this check mark to save changes. OK, now that that record is there, now we're just going to add another record in here. And what we're going to do, actually, let me just get rid of this one here. What we're going to do is I'm just going to scroll up here, and I'm going to add a new record. And I am going to put, I'm going to add a C name record. And what we're going to do is a C name record here for www. And the target is my server name, server.example.com or whatever you got. I'm going to add that on there and just hit this uh, check mark to add that alias on there. So that what's going to happen is is now www is going to point to this server.example.com. Server.example.com points to my public IP address, and they both should get to the same place, and that's how that would work. Now let's talk about how to get your uh, IP address updated if you've got a dynamic DNS. Um, one of the things that's in here, if you scroll down, you see I've got dynamic DNS status here, and I've got this password right here. So all I need to do is just copy this password that's here for my dynamic DNS. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this looks like. Uh, I'm going to go over to the App Store. And this is an application that I use called IP Monitor. It's only $3.99 and works really well uh, with keeping all of your addresses up to date. And as a matter of fact, I've already downloaded. I have it running. So let me just kind of show you what it looks like. I'm going to uh, view preferences here. And you can see that what I've done here is it gives me my public IP for both uh, IP version 4, version 6, local for 4 and 6, and router 4 and 6. And so it just gives me all of the information I need right here in a nice handy area. And then over here is where I would create um, the, um, the, the setup to look up my particular IP address. So let me just hit the plus here to show you what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is select the DDNS provider and I can call this whatever I want. Uh, yeah, I can call it my server's name or whatever. And then from this drop down I go and find whatever service I'm using. You can see it's got all the different services on here that work with dynamic uh, DNS. And for us we want to go down here and find uh, Namecheap. Uh, so there we go, Namecheap. 
And there it is. I don't need an uh, address, but right here is where I would paste the password that I got off my website there. And I can put in the host name here if I want to, you know, like server.example.com. And then I would click Update and make sure it's updating the information here. And then I can add it to my different services. And then once that happens, it starts to update all of my information automatically for me and just keeps that uh, public IP address updated on the Internet so that I can get to my server remotely when I set up those services. I'm just going to close this down here. So that's one way that you can do that and it works really well. Again, if you have a static IP address, then you would just add the records like I showed you and you wouldn't need this extra step to make that work. Let's just kind of go back into the server. So that gives you an idea of how the uh, DNS service works and how you set it up. Now let's just do a couple of things to test to make sure that our DNS is working properly. Okay, one of the first things we can do is come into terminal here and use a dig command. And so we're going to type dig with a space and then a dash x and then put in your local IP address. And if I hit enter, you'll notice that it comes back with all my records correct. See, here's my reverse lookup. It says it's got a record for my server's name. It's got an NS record for my server's name. And when you look up my server's name, it gives me my local IP address. So that kind of tells me that everything's running properly and has all the records that I need for DNS. Uh, another way I can test that, and let me just pull up Network Utility here, is to go into Network Utility and hit the lookup here and put in my local IP address. Hit lookup and you can see that my local IP address points to my server's name. I can do the reverse lookup by putting in my server's name and hitting lookup and it'll go the other way around and show me that my DNS is working and that all my lookups are going fine. So that gives you an idea of how to just test your DNS. Again, that uh, shows that it's working for me and everything is in good shape. So that hopefully that helps you get started with DNS. I wanted to try to cover everything related to it here in the screencast so you can get a kind of a big picture view of how to make this work. And hopefully it'll help you set your DNS up too. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.